Welcome all, I'm glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today I'm sharing a floating edge card design. This is something you can do with a variety of products you already have on hand, and I have a few examples for you. On these cards, the front looks like it kind of floats above your desk or your work surface, thanks to strategically placing a few die cuts or elements. I also have lots of tips for stencils, layering stencils, and adding interest to your die cuts. Let's get started with this first example. I do have a helper today. I have Lila here helping me. I have a sore shoulder, so doing ink blending is a little rough, so she'll help me with that. Also, before we get started, I'll be using the material that you see here. It's like a blank stencil material. Now, it looks like what stencils are made from, but it's thinner, so you can easily cut it and die cut it. So it's great for creating your own stencils and masks. So you'll see this throughout the video. If you don't have a product like this, I'll link to it below, but if you don't have one like this, you can also use clear acetate pieces, something from recycling. It's just that clear is hard to see on your work surface and in the videos, so I thought this was a great option. So if you see material like this, that's what it is. I'll link to it below. I just cut pieces from this larger sheet. This is the new Altenew Citrus Fruits Pattern Layering Stencil Set. These stencils are really easy to layer up because there are engraved lines on each stencil that help you line up with what you've already inked. So I'll be using these for my first card. I love these. I think it creates such a fun and happy background. I will be using my all to new sticky matte grid, which I'll place on my glass work surface. This will help to hold my paper and stencil in place as we do our inking. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white card panel, and I'll place the first stencil on top of that. You can see how that sticky grid kind of grabs a hold of the stencil and it'll stay put. I'm using little pieces of Altenew satin tape to cover up the top of the glass portions of this stencil. So this stencil creates some lemons, some oranges, and it also creates glasses of lemonade or orange juice. Well, the top of the glasses is part of the stencil, and I want to save that. I'm not sure what color I want that to be right now. So I put pieces of tape to mask them. Over the rest of this stencil, I'll be applying a sunray color from Altenew using a large ink blending tool. I like to use a large blending tool when I'm covering a large area. Say I am ink blending an entire background or covering the entire stencil with the same color as I'm doing here. The circles on this I want to turn into oranges, so I'm going to go over that yellow with an orange ink only on the circles. But I needed to mask off the, off the others, so I thought I'd create my own mask. I found a circle die that's slightly larger than the openings of those circles on the stencil, and I'm cutting that from that stencil material that I showed you earlier. Here you can see how easy it is to cut. I have my die cut machine, and I put a piece of scrap cardstock, then the stencil material, then the circle die and run it through my die cut machine. And that will cut through that stencil material or it'll cut through whatever acetate you have. This basically creates a circle mask and I can put this over my stencil background so that I can ink up just the circles with an orange ink. So here you can see it's laying over one of the circles. I can ink over that circle very easily and then move on to the next one. Again, you can use clear recycled plastic for this. You can even use cardstock for this and die cut a circle from a piece of scrap cardstock. I just like to use this material because it's reusable and I can save this little stencil mask for future stencils. Or I can put it in with this stencil so when I want to create another background with this set, I'll have it ready to go. Now, if you don't want to do this, you could also just mask off the areas around it using tape or post-it notes, but this is easy because it just moves from position to position so that you can ink up all of the circles with the orange ink. And you can see I save time by doing yellow over everything and then putting this darker orange ink over the yellow in the circle areas. Now you could make some of these grapefruits or limes if you wanted to. I'm just doing lemons and oranges today. All right, so you can remove that stencil and then take off the little pieces of tape. Remember these little spots that I had masked off were the top of the glasses of lemonade or orange juice. I thought about inking them up right now, but I'm not sure yet how I want to ink those, if I wanna do like a light gray or a light blue. 
So I lined it up, did some thinking and decided I'm gonna come back to it. So I'm taking that off and moving on to the second stencil. This does some layering to the oranges and uh, lemons, and it also does whatever juice you want in your glasses. So first I'm using the Snapdragon color, which is a slightly darker orange, and I'm also using that stencil mask that we made earlier with the circle opening, so that I can just apply this darker ink over those circle oranges that we already did making those oranges look even more realistic. So you can see how easy, easy it is to move from one to another. You could do masks and post-it tape, but creating a little uh, stencil mask like this that you can reuse is really handy to have. I'm also using a smaller ink blending tool from Altenew that allows you to get into those smaller areas easier. Next, I'm using that mask and another scrap of that stencil material to mask off the openings for the juices that are in the glass. So here I'll put some of that uh, lighter orange color so that this glass has some orange juice in it, then I'll move it to the next one. Some of the glasses I'll make it so there's orange juice and some others I'll ink with yellow so that it's lemonade. But I'm using that same circle mask to help me mask off the other areas here too even though the area that I'm inking right now isn't a circle, it's that glass shape, but this mask still helps to protect the other open areas of the stencil. Now, sometimes you have a stencil where you can do selective inking without needing a mask. Instead, you can just use a smaller blending brush. So for example, these lemons up here that I'm about to ink, see how they're far enough away from the other open areas that I don't need to mask anything. I can just use a smaller brush and the darker yellow ink to add that color over the stencil. All right, so I'll remove that and you can see how we're already starting to build our background. I'll put that back under our sticky mat and go for our next layering stencil. This one I'll do a green ink, my favorite green color. This is the Let Us Celebrate from Altenew. And I'll do the same color over all of it. I will start with the bigger blending brush and just do a light hand over everything. Then I will come with a smaller blending brush and apply more of that ink with a heavier hand just at the base of those leaves, just to give the look of two, two shades of the same color, but really I only use one ink color, lighter and darker. Now, by the way, the sticky mat that I'm using here, the Altenew grid mat, that is made from the same material as a clear stamp. So it has that same kind of stick, which is just enough to hold the paper in place, but then anything smooth, like the glass work surface I'm working on, or the stencil will really hold place. So you don't have to worry about the stencil moving as you work. Watch, as I press the stencil on the sides, it almost suctions on to that grid mat. All right, now Lila's coming in to help me ink these up because my shoulder's bugging me. So this time I'm doing like the ice cubes and the straws on the background, the straws for our lemonade and orange juice. And I'm using a soft pool color, this is Dew Drops. And she is applying this with a bigger blending tool. So it takes less effort to cover the bigger area. So remember, a bigger ink blending tool is great for bigger areas, and a smaller ink blending tool is great for selective inking, only inking small areas at a time. But if you want to only invest in one size ink blending tool, I'd go for a medium size so that you can make it work for both. Now we finished off all of the stencils, but we're going back to the first one. Remember on the first one I had masked the areas that were the top of the glass because I wasn't sure what color I wanted to do? We're going back to that first stencil and inking up just those areas, and I'm using a super light ink. This is Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink, which is super light gray, and I'm using a small blending brush so that I can apply ink just over the top of the glasses. It's kind of hard to see here, but once I hold it up to the camera, you'll be able to see. So in this case, I have a small area, and so I'm using a really small detail blending brush. After we've done all of that inking, we have our background complete, and look at this. I love the result of this. Remember, you could make some of those limes or grapefruits, but we stuck with oranges and lemons. It was at this point that Lila convinced me we needed to add some sparkle embossing powder, which is her favorite technique. So I have our background here. I'm gonna heat set it to make sure that all of that ink is dry. And she is grabbing the stencil that created the ink cubes and the straws. 
and we're going to reline that up with our background after we use some anti-static powder tool. And then on top of that pool color ink that we did over the stencil previously, we're going to add some Versamark ink. That way there is like a clear sticky ink on top of that pool color ink that will hold the embossing powder that we're about to add. So here Lila is using Versamark ink along with the Tim Holtz ink blending tool to really press that Versamark ink into those openings. When using Versamark ink, I prefer to use the foam ink blending tool like this one because you can really press it in and get that into the little crevices. Then we remove the stencil and we are adding Hero Arts Sparkle Embossing Powder. This is a clear embossing powder with glitter in it, so it'll have a nice sparkle to it. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but it definitely sparkles in real life. So now our ice cubes and straws have that bit of sparkle. If you wanted to have more sparkle here, you could use like a glitter paste instead, but this is a great option if you want something subtle without bulk. All right, now let's create this fun floating edge card design. This is where those letters for sweet kind of hang off the bottom and allow the card to still stand up, but looks like it's kind of floating. I'll first create that border there that has some glitter paper on it. So I cut about a half inch strip of glitter paper. This is Alt's new Dazzling Diamond Glitter cardstock. I love this. It's kind of between a silver and a gold. And then I matted it with a white cardstock strip. Now my letters are made with the Altenew Mighty Alphabet dies, one of my favorites from Altenew, and I cut them from black glossy cardstock, but also layered a regular white die cut behind it, so it has a little dimension and strength to it. Now here I'm taking a piece of satin tape from Altenew, just temporary tape, and I've taped the ends down so that the long strip of tape has the sticky side facing up. That will allow me to get the placement and spacing of my letters just right. I die cut the letters sweet. Those are stacked up with the black glossy on top. And I'm placing them onto that tape, making sure I get the spacing just right to fit along the bottom center of this card. I will then take another piece of tape and lift those letters off the first piece of tape, all connected and spaced nicely. And I'll set that aside. Now I'll take that stenciled card panel that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches and cut a strip off the bottom that is one and a quarter inches tall. And I will take a top folding white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and cut one and a quarter inch strip off the bottom front of that card too. Now you can make that bigger or smaller with strip, it really doesn't matter. I just wanted that front half of the card, the front of the card, to be a little bit shorter than the back of the card. Then I will glue our pieces onto that. And you can see how the background is continuous along this four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. But the front is a bit shorter. Now along that front edge, right along the bottom, I'm gluing that cardstock and glitter cardstock strip that I layered earlier just to give it a nice finished look. Then we have our sweet letters. Now I told you I glued a white die cut and a black glossy die cut together for strength, but I want it to be even stronger. So I created more die cuts of the letter sweet from white cardstock and I'm gluing those on the back. So this is three die cuts thick. So it'll be strong enough and uh, provide enough st support to hold up the front of our card. Once I glued those three die cuts together, I'm putting glue only along the back top of each of these letters, and I'll pick up the whole piece of tape with all the letters connected and lay it right down onto our card so that the bottom of the letters are close to the bottom back of the card. And I'll press that down and put something heavy on it while it dries. So these letters are only connected to the front of the card. The bottom of the letters are just floating there. Once that's dry, I can remove that temporary purple tape and my sweet letters will be attached. Now I want to stamp You Are So above my sweet die cut letters. So I'm using the Altenew Sincere Sentiment Stamp Set. And in there is a greeting that says You Are So Sweet. But I only want to stamp You Are So. So I decided to just ink up those words and not ink up the word sweet and stamp it on my project. Another option would be to cut off the word sweet so that we don't have to worry about how we ink it. Another option would be to put a piece of scrap acetate or scrap paper 
over the area where the word sweet would stamp, and that would keep it from stamping on your project, and then you can remove it. So in, in all here, all I did was stamp the words you are so and masked off the word sweet so that we have a complete sentiment along with our die cut letters. So here is the completed card. You can see how those die cut sweet letters kind of float off the bottom edge and it still stands up nicely on display. I did layer those sweet die cut letters so it was strong enough to stand up nicely. I also stamped I appreciate you on the inside and added a little uh, glitter cardstock strip there also. So the front of the card matches the inside of the card nicely. Now it's hard to see here, but we do have that sparkle embossing powder on those little ice cubes and straws, thanks to Lila's tip. And we have the sparkle on those glitter cardstock strips. So this is one way to easily do a floating edge card where those sweet letters add enough strength for the front of the card to stand up even though it's cut short. Okay, let's do another example where the front of the card is cut short. And this time I have a sentiment die cut to help hold up the front of the card instead of those individual letters. And by the way, Lila came up with the design of this card. So here I have the Altenew Caribbean Life layering stencil set. This does ocean, beach, and three different cloud clusters. So this is one you can use with a variety of products you likely already have. You can create little critter scenes, whatever you want. I'm doing a little ocean, a little beach, and three clouds on our card front. I appreciate that these come with a guide that makes it really easy to figure out and some card examples. Okay, so I have a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, and I'm laying that onto my sticky Altenew grid mat, and that will just kind of hold it there as we do stenciling. We're starting with the first stencil that does like the solid part of the ocean, and I'm making the top edge of that about halfway on the card front. Then we'll press that down and you can see how that stencil kind of suctions onto our sticky mat and holds it there. Then I'm taking a piece of that stencil material I showed you at the beginning and putting it at the top to mask off that top area so we don't get ink up there. Because we have a large solid area to ink here, we're using a large ink blending tool and applying dew drop ink. You could use whatever inks you want here, but we decided to go with colors inspired by the Caribbean ocean. So we went with that bluish green color, that beautiful pool color. Lila applied a light amount of that ink there and we're cleaning off the stencil with a dry cloth and then removing it. And we can move on to the next layer of the ocean. So we're lining that up and thankfully it gives little marks to help you line it up nicely. We'll press that onto the sticky mat, put the extra stencil material at the top to mask that off. And now using a slightly, slightly darker color, this is the pool color. Now you could have used the same color you used over the first portion of the stencil and gone heavier handed, but we had three shades of beautiful colors that went well together, so we're using those. So Lila applied the pool over this one and we'll remove that stencil and then shift this stencil up for the third portion of this layering. And this just gives a few more details. We'll press that down and then I'll take those two extra pieces of stencil material and cover up anything else that is exposed. So these two pieces, these border strips here, I keep and I use anytime I wanna mask off a large area. All right, this time we're using the darker aqualicious color. And since these are smaller openings, she's using the smaller mini ink blending tool from Altenew, which allows you to much faster apply a heavier amount of ink color over small areas. I usually use this size and that larger one the most. Okay, so after we've done that, we'll wipe that clean and remove it and look at that beautiful ocean. Now you could flip it over and make the ocean coming up from the bottom. There are so many ways you can use these stencils. Now I am fussy cutting along the front edge of that little ocean water. This actually didn't take very long to do. It's pretty easy to cut, but we're just cutting the front part of the card. So that cuts the front part of the card shorter kind of like we did earlier, but now we have that fun little ocean edge. All right, now it's time for the sand on the inside. So I'm lining it up so that that wave edge lines up with this opening stent of the stencil. But I'm gonna slide the back half of my card into that so that I can line this up. Just watch, I'm lining up the edge of the water with the edge of the stencil, and then I will open up my card. 
So this lines up the sand that will be inked on the inside of the card with the water's edge that's on the front of the card. Now we're putting down that extra stencil material mask up there on the top and applying a sand color ink over this opening. So this will give us sand on the inside bottom of our card that will show when the card is both opened and closed. After she's inked this up, we will take that little extra portion that you can see at the bottom of the stencil there and line it up with the sand's edge and apply a darker brown color. This time we're using Rocky Shore. So we're doing a floating edge card design here where part of the stenciling is on the front of the card and part is on the inside of the card. But when it's closed, we'll see it all, just like we had on the last example. And here you can see we have our beach scene started. Now we'll add some clouds to the top. Lila ended up going up and making brownies with her grandma, so I'm doing the clouds here. Now this is one stencil that I cut apart because it's one stencil with three different cloud formations. So I just cut between the three different cloud formations. You could leave it as one, but I thought this made it easier. So I'm taking one of those cloud formations, lining up the solid area where I want to ink it up and I'm putting a light amount of iceberg ink over it. So I'm just putting a soft blue cloud shape here. Then I will remove my stencil, including those little extra stencil material pieces that I have masking off everything else, and then put the second layer lined up. So I just shifted over there, you can see the second layer. Now you could go with a darker blue here, but I thought it'd be fun to do a white pigment ink. So it makes it look like it kind of glows a bit. So I'm using Altenew Pigment Ink. This is the Cloud White. It's a beautiful white pigment ink. And I'm using an ink blending tool I have designated just for white pigment ink. And I'm dabbing it over that stencil opening and look at that beautiful result. If you wanted to, another thing you could have done was ink the sky blue, then do the clouds with a white pigment ink, but I wanted to keep my sky pretty bright white, so that's why I went with this option. All right, so now we're doing another cloud formation, doing it over there on the left-hand side. I'm putting down that light amount of iceberg ink. Then once I'm done with that, I can shift that stencil over and do the second layer with the cloud white. So you can see how those extra pieces of stencil material are helpful in masking off all of the edges. If you don't have a material like this, again, you can use scrap pieces of plastic from packaging you may have. You can use scrap cardstock. Anything will work here. I just like that these are something I can easily see because it's got that white cloudiness to it and something that I can reuse many times. All right, there we have our two clouds and I'll finish it off with a small cloud here on the bottom right, doing the iceberg first and then the white, white cloud on top. Now remember, this is a white pigment ink. It's a pigment ink, so it's gonna stay wet for a bit. So I'm heat setting it so that I don't smear that white and it stays nice and crisp. You could also put maybe some perfect pearls on this if you want some shine, but I left it as is. Next, it's time to add our cute little dolphins to this. And these are die cuts that we're going to ink up with inks and ink blending tools. This is the new Altenew Caribbean Dreams die set. This is fantastic because it has some birds, it has a lighthouse, it has a sailboat, dolphins, a little seashell, and much more. And you can see some of these are layering, but the dies also make impressions, so it adds a lot of detail to the die cuts. I really like this lighthouse. You can see the details it creates, but today we're using the dolphins. I have cut the different layering elements of the dolphins from white cardstock, and I'm using ink to add like a grayish blue color. I'm first using the silver lining color, which is a fresh dye ink from Altenew, and I'm putting that heavier towards the tail of the dolphin and lighter towards the head. And I'm using a small mini ink blending tool to add that ink. It makes it very easy to apply the color onto these small die cuts. And the grid mat there allows it to stick and stay in place and it doesn't move around as we ink it. I'm also inking the layering pieces. Now, if I felt at this point that that was a little too gray. I wanted a little more blue to my dolphin. So I came in with a bit of that iceberg color and layered that on top. 
I honestly usually create die cuts from colored cardstock, so I usually would use a gray cardstock for these dolphins, but I couldn't find the right gray. And I wanted that kind of shading where it was darker towards the bottom and lighter towards the top. So the best solution was to just start with white die cuts and color them with ink. That's always a great option if you can't find the right color for your project. So I glued together my dolphins, adding the little layering pieces, following the guide that comes with these dies from Altenew. Now it's time to choose a sentiment, and I wasn't sure what to do. I was toying between two different ideas. The first was to use the Have a Day from that stamp set that you see called Altenew Rainforest Leaves, and use the coordinating die to cut it out and put it on the bottom right. The other option was to do a circle hot foiled sentiment from this Altenew Everyday Sentiments 2 hot foil plate set, and that cuts into a circle, and I toyed with that being on the bottom right. But at the end, I decided to do the Have a Day, uh, Beautiful Day sentiment. I just felt that that went really nicely with this design. So I stamped that with black ink on white cardstock, and I used the coordinating die to cut it out. I did create another die cut from white cardstock and glued it behind it so it would be nice and strong. And now I'm gluing it along the bottom edge of the front of our card. So it's only glued on that little bit of ocean edge so that it's floating there on the front. I also wanted to add some little birds in the sky, so I used an older die set from Hero Arts that has little bird die cut dies in it, and I created those from black cardstock, and I'm gluing them into the sky. You could also create those birds with a marker, really easy to do, just create kind of a flat V shape. Now for the inside, I created a little shell with a pearl in it using that Altenew Caribbean die set that I showed you earlier, and I glued it so that it's only seen when the card is open. I also stamped Miss You from that same stamp set, so again, that's only seen when the card is open. I then used the stylus tool from my Altenew scoreboard. This is just a stylus tool that is great for making little dots on your project. So I'm tapping that stylus tool onto my ink pad and then tapping on my project to create that little look of texture in the sand. You could also use a toothpick for this or the tip of a fine tip brown marker. I also used a glitter pen just to add some lines to the waves that we see in the ocean. This way we have a little bit of sparkle when we tilt this in the light. And finally, I used a black glaze pen for the eyes on the dolphin. This gives a little bit of dimension and a little bit of shine and it makes those dolphins stand out even more. So here's a look at the completed card. You can see the front panel is cut short, but it'll stand up nicely because of that floating sentiment we have glued to the edge. And when we open up the card, you can see more of that scene with the little shell in there, the little sand, and the miss you sentiment. You can also see the stencil layering that we did and the inking on the dolphins, making those die cuts just the color we wanted by starting with white and adding inks. And by cutting the front of that card short and having that floating sentiment, it just adds a lot of interest to this card. It's great for one layer cards, simple card designs, just something to make it a little more unique. I really hope you try this type of card. It's really fun to do. If you're interested in what I used, I have that linked below in my YouTube description. Also, this video is part of a video hop for Altenew. I will have in my description also links to the other videos if you're looking for more inspiration. And at the end here, I'll link to a couple other related videos. Thanks for spending this time with me. I'll see you again soon and have a wonderful day.